make people like me eat shit. Yep. People keep asking for me to be in a one bite. Let's do it. You know what it's time for, right? Mm -hmm. That looks like a horror movie. You can't come to dim sum and not try chicken feet. I don't have any Probably idea not. what to expect. They're like, they're the Russian roulette of peppers. This is not your show anymore, Nicole. This is my show. Adventure is fun. This week I'm in Santa Monica, and if you've never physically visited Santa Monica, you've seen Santa Monica. Well, the pier anyway, because every show, every movie that takes place in Southern California, you get to see this. Now, in Santa Monica, walking distance from that pier that's so famous is a new dim sum restaurant that is the talk of the town. Well, I decided I'm going to be the judge of that. So, let's do this. When you're visiting Lotus Dim Sum, it's very important to use the correct door. <laughs> I'm not going to just film and try a new restaurant without having a signature drink. So right now, I am having a lychee martini. I've never had a lychee martini, so let's try it. Well, hot damn, that's nice. I'm going to lychee onto this for the rest of the day, baby. I'm not just trying dim sum for the first time by myself. I brought my favorite torturer, Nicole. She set this up and I'm gonna sit down and interview her and ask her the hot questions that you guys wanna know. Aww. Really, I'm just gonna find out why she's mean. I mean, I'm so nice. Are you ready? Yeah, let's, let's do, do this. this. So good. <laughs> also, before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe. You know her, I hate her. You don't hate me. When we're on set. Me. And see, it's got stuff right there. Nicole Izuka, the executive producer of the show you all love, People vs. Food. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Seriously, before I, we start joking around, mm -hmm. thank you so much Aww. for joining me and doing this kind of a new format that I'm doing while Matt's in London. So I really appreciate you doing this with me. Of course. I'm seriously so excited for you to try dim sum. I'm Japanese, this is not my culture's food, but I absolutely love dim sum. Like, What culture is dim sum? Chinese. I am going to, because I've never had, I've never been to a dim sum restaurant, uh -huh. I'm gonna have you, if it's okay, do the odoring. Absolutely. But remember, there's no punishment food at the end of this. Of course not. Of course not. This is my show and I'm still skeptical of her. We're gonna try everything. Okay, all right. Who knew that just shaking the menu would turn into this? Did I, huh? Did I order enough? It's pretty exciting. Put that up here. Thank you. Holy moly. Okay, ladies, we're still waiting, but go ahead and take that selfie. All right, what, do we, what am I trying first, Nicole? Okay, I'm just gonna bowl this whole time. I know. Oh wow. That's why Matt's editing. That's why Matt's editing. Rude. So sorry, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. I appreciate that. So the one thing that I did want to tell you about dim sum, mm -hmm. all of these dishes are out here. You know how dim sum started? Dim sum started on uh, the Silk Road. I don't even know what the Silk Road is. The Silk Road was travel in China where they were bringing all of the exotic spices and flavors and teas and stuff out of China. The arts of Eastern Asia were coming into the Middle East via the Silk Road. On the Silk Road, there were a lot of tea houses. Tea was like a very big thing, so that's uh -huh. why you have tea. And tea was seen as very good for a lot of ailments, your digestion. And so they started serving little dishes with the tea at the tea houses. And those were called dim sum, which meant a little touch of the heart. There's a lot of interesting things that you learn about history, about the interactions that people had with each other yeah. through food. If we can all take a look at Sharon's face right now, all she can think about is the food. I don't think she's even listening to Nicole. And that's why I love food is because it is such a wonderful melding of history, flavor, and experiencing history through trying things. I will say, I always, from the time I can remember as an adult, I have always been an advocate that I love food. The one thing I will say is, no, I did not. Until I started doing People versus Food, 
and it gave me a real appreciation of food. Not just the cultural history behind it, but when you came in mm -hmm. and you created People versus Food, what I have realized over the last several weeks is that you didn't just create a really good channel, you created a family. And you did it around food, which is really what food has been used for. And I just think it was really neat that you brought us together. And you did it through food. I larb you. <laughs> that, I need that. I need that piece of footage, please. Girl, it's all yours. With that said, and now that you have that stupid clip, audio, that's going to haunt me. So, we've got a, we've got a, we got a lot, lot of dishes. Food. I think I ordered 17. And what do we have? So, we have Jean Dewey, we have rice, we have cucumber salad, we have chicken rice, we have small, 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 I love you. I don't know if I have enough big shareware for this. <laughs> so when we started this, I said there wasn't going to be any punishment foods, but those are chicken feet and I see peppers. Oh, so the best thing about Shishito peppers, you, have you had Shishito peppers? No. They're like, they're the Russian roulette of peppers. So like one in 10 is hot. The I don't other, feel like that's the best the thing other about these peppers. Ten <laughs> are like the best pepper you have ever had. They are so good. I'm gonna go with these because it's closest. So these are Zhao Long Bao. You're gonna put the whole thing in your mouth. Not the foil cup. Well, I know that. Don't eat the foil cup. So you've actually had Zhao Long Bao before. I have. On the trip. Okay. I don't have any Fuck idea what to expect. No. Cheers. Mmm. There's soup on the inside. There's soup dumplings. It was. It was like chicken soup almost, right? Mm -hmm. That's really good. What is your favorite food that you have prepared and been excited to have people try? I mean, I would say flavor-wise, all of the trying other countries' foods. Again, love the history of food. Right. And I love being able to expose people to new things. Right. And honestly, I learn a lot myself as I'm doing research on all of these different countries' foods. Like, I've traveled a decent amount, but you know, right. you, learn, you learn a lot every single time. My favorite moment was when you held up the Tamago mm -hmm. roll and looked at me dead can and were like, is this cheese? <laughs> That's not cheese. Oh. That's I thought not it was cheese, cheese too. Wait. Oh, I thought it was cheese. <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what is it? It is really good. And I was like, try it. <laughs> and you're like, no, it's definitely not uh -huh. cheap. It's a Japanese sweet egg roll. Really, really good. That was a fun moment. While we have Chef Ash now, it was, it, it prior to Chef Ash, it was you. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that I have Chef Ash oh, now. Oh, I bet. To your credit, gonna be really hard for me because I know I'm interviewing you. I gotta give you kudos. Don't get used to this. She larbs me. Just remember that. Flash back <laughs> to that. I larb you. <gasps> Alright, what's our next food that we're okay, trying? What do you want to try next? That looks like egg to me. Is this shrimp? Do I grab this whole thing and then dip the sauce yeah. like that? Rice roll with shrimp. Oh shit. Right? Oh, these are it's great. It's like rice paper, so it's the rice roll, and then they just have shrimp, or you can get meat, or just a whole bunch of other things, and then it's a vinegared, like, soy dipping mm -hmm. sauce. Okay. Son so, of a gun, that is so good. Next, grab a shrimp. Honey shrimp. Mm-hmm. This is, as a child, this was, like, one of my favorite dishes. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, god dang. Oh, hot diggity dog diggity, ma'am. I've never had anything like this before. If you see honey shrimp or honey walnut shrimp on a menu, order it. Unless you're allergic to shellfish, then definitely don't order it. So far, that's my favorite. What is your favorite punishment food that you've created? Delicious shit. Oh, that was all you, wasn't it? That one was all me. I was also making it, and I kept, I was at home with my husband, Kale. Right. And I kept making him taste it to see if it was bad enough, and he was like, I don't want it. I'm not a reactor. I don't need to try. Why didn't you taste it to see if it was bad enough? Oh, we did. I was just oh. getting a second. 
Opinion. Opinion. Thank My you. tolerance for awful is a lot higher than most, so I just wanted to, you know. I think that the delicious shit was when I knew it's getting real. <laughs> These punishment foods. They're getting real. I was kind of like, oh, well, they don't act if I just, I don't need to like actually make terrible food. They didn't act. No. It's real reactions. They're That's real what you're reactions. Seeing. Yeah. I, I mean, you real. really stepped up the game on that. <laughs> so I think the real question is, is with all of those great successes that you're having, how can you be so mean? Again, <laughs> it's because that's what the audience asks for. <laughs> when you came up with delicious shit, that was your proudest. Well, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Because that was the one where we all went, went in and we're like, like I said, it's getting real. Literally, shit is getting real. The Because we made the Szechuan sauce from Rick and Morty mm -hmm. as well. That's right. And I'm not gonna lie, I like wizarded that sauce. I pulled every sauce jar out of my cabinet at home. I was cooking things, I was tinkering, I was adding a little more sugar, a little more spice, a little more of all of the things. I didn't write down the recipe. I have oh, no idea how no, I created that sauce. It? I could never, and we've tried. Oh, And we can't no. get it right. So that, that was the, it came back for a hot second and then that sauce was gone again. That is my biggest regret, was not not writing down how I made that Szechuan sauce. All right, let's do the peppers. We're each gonna take a pepper. All right, God, if I get a hot one, which you know the odds are pretty high that I will. Just reach over, we're each gonna grab a pepper. I'm just gonna grab it by the stem. All right. One, two, Doink. three. It starts to get hot, but then it goes away. <laughs> so I got super scared. That might just be psychosomatic too. Sure, I, I would totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I got really, really scared. <laughs> hey, nope, it's okay, you're fine. Are they good? They're very good. Mm -hmm. I will never have another one again in my life. I will just say the risk <laughs> on that is not worth the reward. What is this? I've had this before, haven't I? This top stuff before, what is it? Take a bite. I need to know what it is first. This is my show, Nicole. This is, this is not your show anymore, Nicole. This is my show. Adventure is fun. And I want to know what this is first before I take a bite. Delicious food. Let me know what this is. Dim sum. There's meat inside. I will eat it. <laughs> Just tell me what it is. Uh, it's a taro dumpling with pork. A taro dumpling with pork. Mm -hmm. Now, why did why were you scared to tell me that? I was I just like <laughs> that's pork, isn't it? Uh huh. Oh wow! And taro is kind of like a potato-like root, so it's basically like a meat-filled potato deep-fried ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is really really good. Mm -hmm. We knew you grew up in California, Southern mm -hmm. California specifically, in mm -hmm. YU. Mm -hmm. Look at that, film school, NYU. Did you want to do movies? I have always been an artist. Okay. Um, and I was really into ceramics, and I wanted to be a ceramicist and live in the woods and make pottery. Okay. And my... What? My mother pivoted me and said, hey, you know what else you can do with clay? Claymation. Claymation. And so then she signed me up for some animation classes when I was in high school. Um, and I started creating characters and shooting and doing um, claymation and I learned 3D animation. And so when I applied to NYU, it was to be an animator. And I wanted to make video games, but my goal was to make video games for a female-based audience. So you go to NYU. So I go to NYU, I get into and you're animation. And you get into animation. And then I realized what I really liked doing is telling stories. I liked the craftiness. Yeah. I understood that as a producer I could tell other people what to do and then they could just make it all happen. Do you still do ceramics in some way? Um, I do small clay pieces. Do you have clay at home? Mm hmm And you create little figurines mm -hmm. and stuff? That's incredible. And I just do little art like projects. Like a hobby. -ish. It's a hobby. So then what made you go, oh okay, here come new foods in my world. So food replaced clay in my creative pursuits. When I was in college, I uh, one of my summer jobs was working at Shake Shack, the very first Shake Shack that opened in New York in Madison Square Park. Oh my god! And so I got to meet Danny Myers, and I was working with Carrie Heffernan, who was the executive chef of Eleven Madison Park at the time. He 
invited me into EMP and sort of just opened my eyes to what the culinary arts were. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get some of this fried rice because I need to hear this. I was fascinated by the idea of, like, I loved molecular gastronomy. Okay. And I loved everything that Fran Andrea was doing and um, Jose Andreas. And I liked the intersection of science and food. And the fact that you could create something new or create a new flavor or experience that no one had ever tasted before. I had this just ongoing obsession in the back of my head to tell stories through food. All I wanted to do, because I always said, write what you know, create what you know, direct what you know, and like, I had a pretty happy childhood. I didn't have a lot of like, crazy struggles. Right. Um, my parents raised me really well. Um, and I think they instilled in me just that like, your job is to bring joy to other people. And so the content that I always wanted to make was stuff that made people laugh, made people smile, made people think, but like, just slightly outside the box to like, sort of better their lives. Like I wanted to make comedy. And now you make people like me eat shit. Yep. I then worked at uh, Spyglass Entertainment and then MGM Studios as a development coordinator. So I worked on a bunch of movies. And the whole time I was running a uh, underground supper club out of my parents' house. Okay, before we get into your legal activities, let's move on to the next food. You've been staring at these. I have been staring so, at those. These are um, loaded, it's sticky rice. Okay. There's abalone in here. Okay. Um, the singer? From Prince? Isn't that abalone? Come on guys, watch Purple Rain for Christ's sakes. You don't eat this part. Don't eat the, yeah, you don't eat the outside. It's like my emotions, there's so many layers. Ooh, so interesting. Is there, is there meat in there? There is meat in here, too. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, there we go. That, that's a bite. Mm -hmm. Wow! I can't even explain it because I've never had anything like that before. It's very chewy, kind of like mochi, because all the rice is so right. it's like glutinous. But it has that, not really earthy, but kind of like floral flavor from the lotus leaf. Okay. Mixed with the, Because like, it's wrapped and then cooked in it. Mm-hmm. So that all those flavors are steaming into the rice as you're cooking it. That's quite good. Mm -hmm. I will say that my favorite still is this. Is the honey shrimp? shrimp. Pork shumai. I'm gonna take it out of my hand so I don't mess it up. So what do I dip it in first? I don't just dip it in both. You can mix the two too. Oh, I see, okay. But you got two though, so. What is that? Egg. It is egg? Fish egg. Fish egg. Mm -hmm. That is really, really nice. Well done. Mm -hmm. Good order in there, friend. You are recreating anime food. Mm -hmm. How do you sit down and figure out how to come up with it? Well, I was going to say, I have been creating food for digital content for a decade. Unfortunately, like, there's no easy answer to that because it's just learned knowledge. You worked on these productions, which gave you the experience to go to MasterChef. Because had you had not had all that other experience, you wouldn't have gotten this job out of MasterChef. No, I, the team at MasterChef right? took a huge chance on me. Mm -hmm. They could tell that I was passionate about food and that I had taught myself a lot. Like I had read the entirety of Modernist Cuisine at that point. I had been reading Charlie Trotter. I had read a whole bunch of cookbooks. Um, I had been experimenting and cooking food on my own. And they really, they took a big, they took a big shot, chance with me and let me join the culinary team for MasterChef. Um, and I learned so much on that show. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. I did that. I worked on four seasons of Hell's Kitchen, Ooh. which was also really fun. I learned how to make a beef wellington. While I was sort of doing those shows and working freelance, Pop Sugar was launching their food vertical. And um, they asked if I wanted to come temporarily produce at Pop Sugar uh, while I was between seasons of Hell's Kitchen. At one month, they handed me a contract and I was there for five years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sure. I was willing to take a lot of chances with the content that we were creating and pushing the boundaries of what because they were Because you felt you had a security net underneath. Because if they fired me, I had somewhere to go. Got it. They were- I'm so sorry. I keep seeing a thumbnail yeah, yeah. at me. We'll get there. 
this is missing a finger and then I have this thumbnail that keeps staring at me and it's a little distracting oh I'm ready to go in for that yeah I'm 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 ready for this Korean short rib it's a little less dim sum but that's okay. that's okay man <laughs> come on God, this is good all of the producers all of the creative everyone who's at uh, react now mm -hmm. want to make digital content mm. they want to yeah. be here they want to do what we're doing and they want to elevate the genre that we're in they're thinking forward from where we are yeah which is is different and it's a way to connect one-on-one -on -one with people we literally ask on people versus food and I'm starting to able to be able to do that on my channel here I literally say what do you want to see? Mm -hmm. What, what do you want it. to see? And then we'll make it. My next videos that are going to be coming out are me in London. Mm -hmm. And it would not have happened without the kind of direction that my viewers were bringing. And I think that it's a really good merger between this is the art I want to make mm -hmm. and I want to include the viewers that want to watch that art. And it's done, if you do it, I think, in a way like you have done, in a non-egotistical way, it works very well. It works very well. Tempura. 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 I mean, let's just call it what it is. So it's tempura. 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 Shrimp tempura. 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 Shrimp tempura. I'm not saying it right still. Tempura. Tempura. Mm -hmm. Now this I've had before. So this is kabocha squash? I've never had the squash. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up, it was, it was meat, potatoes, and Wonder Bread. I mean, that was it. My palate was always very much just very limited. Well, what my mom said was, you have to try everything at least once. You don't have that's to good. like everything, but you'll never know unless you try it. Well, and that's one thing that you've taught me because I know I don't like curry. And it's okay that I don't like curry. And in seven years, you might like curry because your taste buds change every seven years. Really? Yes. What are we trying here? This is it called pargao? It's just another dumpling. Another type of dumpling. Mm -hmm. This is Izzy Amon's favorite kind of dumpling. I know a lot of weird fun facts about all of you guys. What's in this? Shrimp. 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 What do you know about me that's weird? I know Pavlova makes you have a uh, response. That was the funniest thing. Okay, you gotta try those. You're gonna love that. Okay, so what is this? Uh, chashu bao. Say it one more time. Chashu bao. Chashu? Chashu. Chashu bao. Okay. Is it just a honey roll? Why are you laughing at me and looking I over just, at Laura? I, I can't wait for you to try it. She okay. made a funny noise. Mmm. That's like a... What it, Manapua! Laura loves this. I feel like if you grow up eating this, this is a major comfort food. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. What's next? We've had that, we've had that. Okay. Oh my God, we're almost done. We are. You know what it's time mm -hmm. for, right? Mm -hmm. That looks like a horror movie. I really feel like this is a punishment food. You can't come to dim sum and not try chicken feet. Remember what my mother said. You have to try everything I don't once. see your, I'm sorry. I don't see your mom here. I you do want me to not get her on speakerphone? Nope. I can't eat that one. You chew it, like the whole, the, the food <laughs> is on the inside. You're just chewing the stuff off the outside. Yeah, don't eat the bones. Don't eat the bones. Oh, I mean, that's not comfortable, Nicole. That is not comfortable to me. And if you don't like it, you then know. High five. Oh, come on. Fucking just high five. Oh my god. I feel like my chicken foot wants to just go like this to you. Hey Nicole, Sharon doesn't have to eat everything. Nicole? Oh, come on. My mom's aunt used to eat pig's feet. She just reach right into the... Kale loves these. I don't, I mean, I you don't hate I don't it. hate it. There's a nice juice on it. Mm -hmm. It's like orangey. And but really just the meat kind of, it's that like lightly cartilagey, so it sort of just melts away as you eat it. There are a lot of little bones. So chew it up real good. 
No, don't eat the bones. I can't eat anymore, but I don't hate it, but I'll never have it again. But you've tried it once. I'm very proud of you. Hold on, I need to recover a little bit. I'm almost irritated at how much I don't hate it. For me, it's the whole look. It's the whole, I'm just, I'm grabbing a wrist bone. You high five, I, I feel like if you can high five your food, then that may not be, I, I can't, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, so I, I- Aren't you glad you tried it? I don't know. There's the fingernail. All right. Okay, good. Do you want Let's, dessert? Yeah, I do want dessert. We're going on to the egg tart custard. Ooh, I feel like I, I want to, I've been staring at these chicken feet for four hours. Have you had an egg custard type I have before? not. So they're a golden egg tart. I'm gonna really like this, aren't I? I think you're gonna really like this. I'm going in. Mm -hmm. That's like when you have um, pancakes and eggs. Mm -hmm. And a little syrup that's on your egg. Oh, hot dividend. Mm -hmm. These are super good. Mm -hmm. So you're the executive producer for People vs. Food, mm -hmm. but you're also the creative director for React. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Where do you? Where are you taking the channel? I am excited. We uh, brought in Joe Beretta, who is mm -hmm. the executive producer for React, and he is just such a force of nature. He brings so much joy and like he brings the party and he brings yeah. the life and he brings a little bit of that like heart. Um, now that he's here, we made some other hires on the team. So mm -hmm. we actually have an appropriately staffed creative team for the first time in a while. So we're not all wearing like 20,000 hats. I don't know if you guys saw the very fun saboteur episode. We now have the right team to start being able to experiment with content, okay. getting reactors out of the seats, um, okay. playing more games, creating new formats, and really elevating the React channel um, into, into the next generation of what it is. And I'm right. so excited. And like, I'm so excited by the team that we've built. Yeah. I'm so excited by like, not only the reactors who stayed with us and who have grown up on the channel, uh -huh. We're starting to introduce some new faces into the channel right. um, and seeing sort of who works well with the group and that same thing we want to make sure that we're getting, bringing in people who embody and who fit and who are good people at their core. Right. We have one more food to try. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that a dessert also? This is also a dessert. These are called jandui. Jandui? Jandui. Jandui. Uh, and they are fried sesame balls. I don't like balls, but I like sesame. I'm just keeping it real, Nicole. Just keeping it real. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Can we just, because people keep asking for me to be in a one bite. Let's do it. <laughs> so, you guys are gonna I will show you. How pathetic this mouth is. Well, wait, I'm going to take a bite first, because I want to enjoy it. Mm, that's that um, red bean, mm -hmm. right? Ready? Terrible. Mm -hmm. That's about as much as it's in my mouth. So when Chef Ash and I are thinking about the foods that go into the one bite challenges, mm -hmm. we're not thinking about us. In all honesty, I'm thinking about Sharon. When you first started doing those, first came on board, first mm -hmm. show, were you surprised at how much food I could put in my mouth? Yes. Yes. Well, this has been fun. Mm -hmm. This is a ton of food that we just ate that was so good. I don't hate the chicken feet, but I'll never eat them again. So I just have one more question for you to wrap everything up. A high, what's your high, what's your low, and what's your what the heck moment? I think my high was Kale proposing to me. And your low? One of my lows was honestly eating the delicious shit and almost throwing up on camera. Valid. <laughs> That's one of my lows. That was a pretty big low. Yeah. Uh, my low was like, discovering my food intolerances. June of 2020. Okay. Um, I had been eating everything like my entire life. I had an iron stomach. And then all of a sudden, foods just started making me feel really, really sick. Out of the blue. 
it was like overnight within a month my entire body had changed and it wasn't letting me eat a lot of things that I had eaten and right. enjoyed before. Right. And then last, mm -hmm. what the heck moment. When Morgan Freeman walked into Pop Sugar, randomly walked around the whole office, I was sitting at my desk working and he just puts his hand on my shoulder and says, hello little girl, I have a question for you. And I was like, why is someone touching me? And is this yeah. the voice of God? Oh, oh, it really is Morgan Freeman's just standing here. He wandered into the office like completely unprompted. He wanted a toothpick. That was it. That was it. This wow. You'll never know. Right. All right, well, that's really cool. That's a really cool what the heck moment. Nicole, thank you so much. Of course. This has been a lot of fun. And I'll say it for you one more time, and I'll never say it again. Nicole, I larb you. <laughs> thank you for watching this week's episode of Let's Do This. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss an episode. What's some of the food that you've been experimenting with lately? Let me know in the comments, and I will, as always, See you next Tuesday. <laughs> also, shout out to Matt for editing this beast of an episode. We love you too, we Matt. We love you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I might possibly love you too. Coming up next week. To the airport to go to London. Great, I flew all the way from Los Angeles to London to be in traffic. I am like a kid right now. I am ear to ear, like my face hurts. That's Big Ben, not Little Ben. Oh.